Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about all the bags that I sold in 2023 and on a past video I said that there were 10 but I recounted because I made the list to talk about them and why I ended up letting them go and it turns out that it's actually 11 and I really wanted to sit down and talk about this because most of these bags I didn't really sell them because I didn't love them. They're not functional. They're not great bags because I love them, most of them. I still think they're amazing bags but I implement a lot one bag in one bag out also with that when I see that I'm not reaching myself for a bag for a really long time or that I'm not using it enough I just try to let them go because I don't want to accumulate a massive massive bag collection so yeah I sold a few way more than the ones that I added to my collection last year so I kind of downsize it and I don't know how I feel if I should keep downsizing a little bit more it's getting a little bit tricky because I feel like the bags that I have right now I either absolutely love them or I am sure that I will end up regretting letting them go a few of this I've talked on past videos on my reasons why I ended up selling them but I want to be very through with my reasons and explain why I ended up taking that decision because as I said I loved most of these bags and I still think they are great bags and I don't want anyone to feel like it's not a good bag anymore. Definitely not. I do have very good reasons why I ended up parting with each and every single one of them. So starting with the Dior Book Tote. I thought about selling that bag for the longest time because I love the book tote since the day that it came out. I had the larger size in the oblique and then I decided that the larger one was a little bit too bulky and a lot for me. So I sold the large one and I went for the small one in Toile de Jouy and I am such a fan of that print. I love it so much. It's literally the print of my wedding invites. I just love it and I love the book tote for so many reasons. It fits so much and it's like a piece of art. Like it's such a unique bag. Like no other brand does it like Dior. And the book tote for me was art on a bag basically but for my lifestyle it was really hard to travel with it because of the handles and because it was too bulky and because it was fabric so I was always constantly worried that I was gonna either stain it bend it too much like lose the shape of the bag just damage it in general it didn't fit my laptop it was just not working out the way that I wanted it to work out so I was in denial for a while and just held on to it until I realized that I was just not using it and I kept wishing that I had a bag that it would fit my laptop that it would have like a seat or some sort of like covering because when I was using these bags I kept being a little bit scared of pickpocketing because they're so open and they're also such big bags so I let it go it was one of the first bags that I sold when last year started and honestly I was afraid that I was going to regret it but I don't miss the bag I miss looking at the bag but I don't miss using the bag so after that my journey to finding the perfect tote started and I knew that I wanted something black I also knew that I wanted leather because I just wanted something that would be a little bit more stain proof, that would last longer, that I could just not worry that much about it. So along the lines of selling that one, I also sold my Chanel Duville. This one was harder than the book tote for many, many reasons. I had that specific Duville on my wish list for years. Like that specific beige stripe one, it was so hard to find it. And when I found it pre-loved, I thought, oh my God, this is it. This is the tote. I love it so much. I'm never gonna need another tote. It's going to be perfect. It has pockets. It has a top handle. It has the longer straps and it's a comfortable bag. And the Duville fit my laptop. Actually, it fitted way more than my laptop. I went for the largest size that I think that was also a bit of a mistake. The bag was massive, but also it was such an open bag because the Chanel Duville has this beach vibe look that initially I loved more than anything because I was living at the beach and it went so well with everything that I would put on so after I moved besides the fact that sometimes I felt like it was way too big the look of the bag was too summery I kept thinking that I again just wanted a black bag that would fit my laptop that would probably would have a zipper or a flap or something that I could take on the subway walk around the city travel and if I would put it underneath my seat and it would tip over, things would not spill out or on the overhead compartment, like it was just going to be a comfortable, practical black leather bag. And there's so many things to the Deville that I loved, like the top handles, it was versatile, it was comfy, it was a squishy, soft bag, like it has so many pros to it, but I just wanted something different and I kept thinking about it. I postponed it the most that I could because I wanted to make sure that I was not going to regret it since it took me so long to find it, especially in that 
print but I ended up deciding that it was for the best and to find something that would suit me right now and that's how I ended up with the Chanel 19 bag in the maxi size so this bag fits my laptop it has a flap it's black it has top handle and it has a very good strap that it can be crossbody if you need to but also a shoulder bag so I'm still testing out this bag but I have to say that it's been going very very well I know that it's not a tote but it's serving absolutely everything that I felt like the other two bags were lacking so I'm really hoping that this goes very well because I love it I love the look of the bag the 19 is such a good bag it's so comfy it's so soft it has the back pocket which I love so those two left to make space for this one the number three was the YSL velvet toy lulu and there was absolutely nothing wrong with that bag but I had this massive issue that is that I have a dog she's a golden retriever you know her Masha and she adores taking naps inside my closet so black velvet plus a dog that sheds a lot was such a terrible decision on my part and I should have known that it was not going to be as simple as just cleaning the bag every time that I would go out. And even if Masha was not taking naps in the closet that I don't have an issue with, the bag would attract the hairs no matter what. They were on my clothing or in the air or whatever. If you have a dog, you will understand this. Even if I was cleaning the bag and using the lint roller thing every time that we would go out there was no way that I would not see them still when we were at the restaurant or out or walking so I started to kind of fixate on finding them and taking them off every single time and this is so sad because I love velvet and I would be willing to try it out again just in a different color that is not black because the white hairs were very very noticeable so no matter how much I cleaned it it was driving me insane it's one of the reasons why I stopped using black leggings because they were always filled with her hairs so I ended up selling it because it was too much of a hassle and yeah it was driving me insane but I'm still very open to satin to velvet in other colors that is not black to tweets to suede I'm I'm open I really love bags in different materials it was just a specific one that didn't really work out this one I got so many questions on my handbag collection video because I think it was very unexpected. It was unexpected for me too. But I sold my Dior crystal saddlebag in the mini size. It was satin with a little bit of crystals. And the reason why I let it go is because initially, to anyone that has seen my videos in the past couple of years, I really wanted a crystal bag. But I didn't know which bag to go for. I didn't want anything that was too much. I was not a fan of the Prada re-edition, so I was debating on the Clio. And then I found the saddlebag and it had satin, so it was not a full crystal bag, which was like a very good in between for me and it had these details in crystals that were the hardware mainly it was elegant enough because it had the satin with the hint of the crystals but after buying it I didn't stop looking for a crystal bag which didn't make sense because this was supposed to be it I didn't want to have two crystal bags I didn't want to keep looking but I still felt every time that I would go to Dior or other brands to really obsess and look for other crystal bags so I realized that I went subtle but I really wanted a full-on bling bling crystal bag and and when I found it, being this one, I realized that this was more what I was looking for. So the day that I saw this one, I got it in November for my birthday. It just clicked. This was it. And I knew after getting this one that the saddlebag was going to stay on the shelf. Like I couldn't see scenarios where I was going to choose the saddlebag over this one. So actually someone was specifically looking for that one. They asked me if they could buy it. So I sold it. And it does make sense. Even if that other bag was beautiful, I was just going to always use this one over the other one and yes this one is way more over the top but it was the crystal bag it's really small it's really comfy this one does have a strap the saddle didn't so it makes sense it does hurt a little bit because I think the saddle bag was very unique very very beautiful but I knew that it was gonna take the back seat and start collecting dust and that's just not the point so this one is the reason why I sold it the fifth bag that I sold was the Dior Bobby bag and the only reason why I sold it I've said this quite a few times now is that I have issues with white bags. I love white in handbags so much that every time that I think about adding a new bag, the first color that comes into my mind on that bag is always white. And as I keep adding more white bags, I know that I need to let go of others because if I keep going at this rate, I'm gonna end up with only white bags in my collection. Right now I have more white bags than black. I know that it is an issue or not really, I just really love white on bags. But at the same time, I cannot justify having as many white bags in my collection 
also when they're quite similar in shape and function. So I had to let it go because if not, I'm gonna end up with 30 bags in different shades of white, of white, creamy, light beige, and it just doesn't really make sense for me. So I need to make space to try new things, hopefully try new colors. I know that I would be lying if I said that I was not going to buy another white bag, but by applying the one in and one out, I just want to be very clear that I don't find anything wrong with the bobby bag in particular. I think it's an amazing bag. It had a great crossbody strap. The back pocket was amazing. I love the shape of the bag. It was very understated, very classic. It's just a really, really great bag. Number six is going to be my Picotin and the only fault on that bag was that I think it was not big enough. For the shape of the bag and the things that I was putting inside, I just kept feeling that I wanted to go for a bit of a bigger size and I've gone to the store to try the size up from it and I think it would be a better fit for me because it is an amazing bag but if I was going to go for that size of bag and that type of bag, I really wanted it to fit my camera, my phone, water, some snacks and I kept finding that I was overfilling it every single time. So it's not the design, it was not the bag itself, I was just feeling like I needed a bit more space when it came to the Picotin in particular. Also it was white, it just made sense, I don't know in what other color I want to try it but I know for sure that I want to size up in the future if I try it out again. That I'm quite sure that I'm gonna end up doing it because I really like the bag. I think the Picotin was such an amazing bag and the Clemens leather and how slouchy. There's so many aspects of it that I truly truly love but I think maybe another color probably a little bit darker and a bigger size is going to serve me exactly as I want without having to keep stretching what fits inside of the bag. The next two I'm gonna explain them together because when I decided to sell one I instantly knew that I was going to sell the other one I just needed a little bit more time to part with it. So I sold my two backpacks which were the Montsouris PM and the other one is the Palm Springs Mini. The thing is that I'm just not a backpack person. If I was wearing those bags because I did use them but I was using them as top handles. So the straps, I was literally not using them like that. Honestly, it was really hard to part with the Palm Springs Mini because that bag was what started pretty much everything for me. I loved that bag so much and I struggled to find it for so many years because it was so popular and I was set that I was going to get it. So when I finally had one, I just attached so much to it. I love mini backpacks. There's something in me that just really gravitates towards them, but I end up not using them as they are intended to. And Specifically for the Palm Springs Mini, I was so scared that I was going to regret selling it because I had attached like feelings to the bag and a lot of memories and I really loved it but at the same time I would always see it on my shelf and I just found myself not really wanting to reach out for it as much as I used to and growing and evolving in my lifestyle, in my way of dressing, in what I need on a day-to-day -day was something that I needed to process and understand a little bit more to then know that it was just not a bag that was serving me anymore, both of them, so I ended up selling them. Do I miss the Palm Springs Mini? Yes, but I think that it's for the best. I think now that I understand the whys it was not working out, it makes me feel a little bit better. But that bag was like such a journey and I don't want anyone to feel like I didn't love it and I just sold it. Like it was something that I really needed to sit down and think why. And as a mini backpack, I think both of them are one of the best that you can find out there. I'm just not a backpack person and I had to accept that. The next two are my Kelly to goes and this one was a little bit of a roller coaster because I used them so 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 much from the moment that I got them specifically the gold one I had one in gold with gold hardware and one in blue bloom with gold hardware those two are such amazing and great bags the thing is that when I first got my mini Kelly I just started using this one so so much every time that I would look at the other ones I would just keep choosing this one and I saw them like very similar bags but this one has a top handle and fits a little bit more so when I didn't have this one then now I think this is my most used bag ever like I always take it with me before I had this one those two were really filling the gap for this one because I didn't have it I didn't know that I was gonna love the mini Kelly that much but at first when I got that one I felt like having two Kelly to goes was too much, that it was not necessary. So I decided to part with one of them. I parted first with the gold because I felt like the blue one was so special that I was not gonna find it again. So it made sense to me to do the one in, one out with the gold one. That one I don't regret it because yes, even if this one is white, I use it to death. I was not going to use the Kelly to go in gold and I was still reaching out for the blue room quite a lot. But after I got the blue Birkin, the Kelly to go in blue also took the back seat. And 
and in most instances if i was going to go for a blue bag i was going either for my blue classic flap or for the blue birkin and if i wanted a compact bag i was not going for the kelly to go and i was still going for the mini kelly like i know that this one doesn't really look like it's very practical but for some reason for me it works great like i could not talk more about this bag i'm so scared to start saying the wear on this bag long term because of how much i take it on trips how i push it to work with outfits that i probably shouldn't be because of possible color transfers so that's the reason why i sold them just the mini kelly was working better for me and the last one that i sold in 2023 was without a doubt the one that it was the hardest to let go and that is my vintage classic flap the one that i had for my birth year in this light beige i debated so so much if I was going to let it go or not. I ended up weighing the pros and cons of selling it, of keeping it. And even from the moment that I decided that I was going to sell it, I still kept it for a few months just to make sure that I was not going to really regret the decision. I got for Christmas a Kelly in almost exactly the same shade, also vintage, and I was already considering letting one of my classic flaps go. So it was the one that was closest in color. The other one was my caramel flap, but I used that bag so, so much. So this one I had to really force myself to go through it and I'm still feeling a bit sad about it but at the end of the day selling bags to fund for new ones is the healthiest thing to do it allows you to try new things new brands new styles or just try to find something that will suit you and that you will love way way more and even if it's things that you love that you don't really feel like there's anything wrong with them I just don't see myself having a massive handbag collection even if I love watching those massive closet videos or for example Chiara Ferragni that she has every classic flap in every color every Birkin in every color and also in the Kelly as much as I love it and I wish that was me I just cannot do it first of all these are really really expensive bags and selling to buy is what makes the most sense to me but also there's something about going to my closet and seeing every single bag there and knowing that every single one of them I use them a lot I rotate them enough I can justify to myself having them and even downsizing further would make sense for me I'm just right now in a very tricky spot where I love absolutely everything that I have right now so that's something that I'm gonna have to sort out a little bit more into the future but now that a few months have passed since the last one that I sold I can say that it was the right thing to do I feel really good in the spot where I am right now and I want to try new brands and I I don't feel like as guilty actually a few of the bags that i mentioned on this video they are still for sale brutalux has my duville if it has not sold yet and my credit to go in blue room so i'm gonna link them on the description box down below and my bobby bag i consigned that locally so that one is available at bam luxury store so i'm also gonna link that one but i just want to encourage anyone that has been debating on either downsizing or selling some bags that maybe they have not been working out at the end of the day these are just items and if you want to try new things or you just have this feeling of of selling something i think it's really good and healthy and probably the best way to go and also i just want to say again not because i sold them it means that they're not good bags everyone has different lifestyles and ways of dressing and what you carry inside your bag so i just really hope that this video doesn't make anyone feel in that sort of way about your bags if you have any of this but just to encourage anyone that if something is not really working out you can always let it go and try new things so this was the video i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you're not to my channel please consider subscribing and click the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my videos and if you're not done watching i'm gonna leave you two videos right here in case you want to check them out thank you and see you on the next one. Bye!